Hello, this is Alan Thiel with Midwest Machinery. This video today, we're gonna to do a walk around. This happens to be a 9770 STS combine. Whether it's a 9770, 9760, or an S series combine, pretty much all the same basics. So we'll start on one side of the combine. We're gonna do one walk around all the way around, and we'll get the basic points as far as what you should do for an after season inspection. Starting with the feeder house, there's a slip clutch up here that's going to need some lubrication throughout the season. We have the drive chain here. This one happens to already have been replaced, so the tension is good on it. We have idlers down here, and we have your drive sprockets up here. To start with to do an inspection, I would recommend loosening this chain all the way up, removing it so we can spin the idlers so that we can see if there's any looseness in the idlers or anything like that. That'll be the time when you could change your sprocket, what size sprocket you have on here. Um, normally, this is gonna be like on an S-series combine, this is gonna be a 32 tooth sprocket and a 26 tooth sprocket. Generally, we leave that on the 26 tooth sprocket all the time. There may be a situation in small grain where you would move to the 32 tooth sprocket. My opinion would be probably to replace this sprocket with one out of parts and get one that is a 26 tooth sprocket and a 22 tooth sprocket. That way you can run a 26 tooth sprocket in, in beans and a 22 tooth in corn and slow your feeder house down even a little bit farther than what you normally would. Inspecting the rest of the side of the flex feeder house, here's your tension for your feeder house from the spring here and a gauge that shows you to have the right feeder house tension on there. Um, underneath, we have your rock trap door and feeder house door and seal. You wanna inspect that stuff all real good. Underneath, you're also gonna look up through there, you're gonna inspect your feed accelerator. Um, here's the tension. We can take the tension off the feed accelerator belt and we can slip the belt off so that we can turn the feed accelerator up underneath there. There's some wear strips and plates on that feed accelerator that we wanna inspect, make sure they don't have any rock damage on them. Inspect the feeder house floor, make sure there's not any big dents or any, any cracks or anything in there. Underneath the feeder house. We have the stone trap door open. We look up in here, here's our discharge beater and the wear strips that are on that one. This one happens to have the serrated regular wear plates that are on it. We flip our door up and look over the top of our transmission. We can now see our shoe auger gears, the bevel gears that run the shoe augers, all the bearings, the bearings on that cross shaft that are something to check. Again, the drive shaft here or we have our spline shaft that probably should have some, should be taking apart and put some, some never sees on that. So that's a look from underneath the feeder house. Now would also be the time to move your feeder house drum back to the down position because you're probably gonna start with either small grain or beans next year, which your feeder house drum gets to the up position for corn, down for beans and small grain. Moving around to the front of the feeder house, you have your feeder house chain. My recommendation would be to roll this around until you get your feeder house splice links in here. I would actually de detension the chain. I would take the feeder house chain apart so that I can roll this front drum. I can wiggle it back and forth to check the bearings, make sure that's good, make sure the bearings are good, make sure there's no big dents in the drum. Everything rolls around good. Um, this feeder house chain, is in the normal shipping position with the serrated edges on the leading edge. What we're finding in corn, on, especially on an S-series combine, where we're, we're turning these around now, so the flat edge, the non-serrated edge is leading. It's gonna help a little bit with corn damage, with kernel damage. So that's a possibility of something you may do when you're in here, if you would have to reverse your feeder off chain, or if you have some other issues that you're working with in there. Moving around to this side of the feeder house, a very important part of this combine is the reverser and the reverser sheaves. There are 10 hour grease circs and 50 hour grease circs in here. Um, there is an oil level on this gearbox to make sure that it's correct. The, the mistake that gets made, everybody remembers to grease these pretty well, but what happens is we forget that we need to move them sheaves in and out, go from high speed to low speed a couple of times to get our, to get our grease moved around in, that, in here when we do that. Um, so if you happen to have your cutting platform on here, 
you're not going to be able to change your variable speed and it's going to be at the low speed. So when you need to grease that, you need to unhook your multi-coupler up here and get back in the cab, then run your variable speed in and out a couple times to move that grease around, distribute it where it needs to be, then get back out and hook your multi-coupler back up. If you have your corn head on, then you can move that right from the cab without disconnecting your multi-coupler. Moving back here again, you want to make sure you get this off, spin this pulley, make sure there's no play in that pulley. Uh, all the way around the combine, you're going to want to check that kind of stuff. Same with the top variable speed. There are grease certs up in there, and then sheaves do move. So that's all one thing. You want to grease all of that at the same time. Um, check your hoses, your belts, your cable. Make sure, you're, make sure your latch pins move in and out like they should. Um, Moving back just a little bit back here, we can see our real drive pump. It's a little hard to see in the video, but, but you'll be able to, you'll know what I'm talking about when you start doing this inspection. Again, I would detension these belts. I would take them off so that I can spin these pulleys. Um, you can spin this one, spin the pulley here for your, um, for your real drive pump because there are some bearings in there. There's three certs in there. Final drives. Oil level on the final drives to be checked every year. Uh, also recommend taking the spline couplers apart and putting never sees in those. Spline couplers, when they're dry, do wear. So if you take them apart, put them back together with never sees in there, you're gonna keep that wear out of those. All right, moving around this side of the combine farther. We'll turn a couple lights on. Hopefully we can see a little bit better underneath here. Um, Going back to this side, we have our fan here, which on these is a big, a big long fan, a paddle fan in there. So you really want to take a good look at the paddles on that. You want to make sure you check the bearings there. There again, take the belt off on the other side so you can spin it, make sure everything looks good there. Um, the big bearings on your shaker arms here, need to get a pry bar in here, make sure there's no play in any of them. Get those checked out. <coughs> Take a look at all your hosing along here. Make sure we don't have any leaks, anything there. Um, up here, we have our electric clutch for the feeder house. So we have we have pulley here that's going to have could possibly have some play in it. We have drive shaft knuckles up here that we need to take a look at. We also have a gearbox here. That one has a dipstick from up on the top that you want to look at up there. Um, unloading auger drive system. This one has the chain replaced already, but there again, take the chain off, spin all your augers, make sure they all turn good. Um, spin your idlers, make sure they're good. Check your, check for any play in the bearings in these drive gears in here. <clears throat> um, then, then once you put it all back together, make sure your chain tensioner is adjusted correctly. Inside of here, and something I missed up on the front when we were talking about it, up underneath there is your drive for your, for your shoe augers. You have sprockets, there you have gear, bevel gears and bearings up there that we need to check on them, on them shoe augers. And when you get up in here, you can't see it from there, but when you look in here, there are augers on the back of the shoe augers, and I, I can see the shoe augers real well here. You can see down into your chaffer and sieves, so there's things you wanna look at there. For me, I would drop one center concave down on this. I would drop this one down out of the way so I could get in there to inspect the concave, the rotor very well. Look at all your threshing elements. Um, and while you have that one down in there, that's the time to adjust your, your concave to make sure it's level. Make sure, that, make sure that the front is the same distance from the rotor as threshing elements as the back is from the threshing elements. And turn your, you'll be able to put your rotor in neutral you can turn your rotor around, check everything in there. Uh, moving back just a little bit, we get back to the separator grates. Same thing there. These, these spacers that are in between this grate here, if you're going to do wheat next year, you need to take these spacers out and put them back on top of this rail and pull this together. If you're going to just do corn and beans, leave this, those spacers in there all the time. Again, I would take one of these grates out to be able to get in here and inspect your rotor very well. You only probably need to take one out and you can see all of it. You can see through it to a degree, but I think it's just better if you take one out and get a little bit better look at it. Down inside here, I can see the pre-cleaner and the front of the chaffer, and there's a shaker pan in here that brings the grain 
from, from the back of the rotor back forward and drops it on the front of the sieves. Uh, another thing to look at there is after, the, after a late fall, if you had a late fall and you got into some of the, the wetter frosty conditions or some of the snow, make sure there's not material built up on this chaffer or on this pan because it'll, it'll stick there from the frost. Make sure that gets cleaned off good if there is. Um, we got some wiring up here that we need to we want to take a look at very close. Get down here. There's some more bearings, some idle or some uh, shaft speed monitors in here. Some of that we want to look at. Behind this one, we have our hydraulic stack valve. You're gonna want to look for oil leaks. Make sure we're all good and dry there, so that we're not starting starting next season with any oil leaks that are gonna cause us any problems. Um, moving back just a little bit farther, we have our discharge beater. There again, we're gonna pull that belt off. We're gonna roll everything over. We're gonna make sure this idler is good. We're gonna roll the discharge beater over, make sure we don't have any bad bearings there. Same type of issue with the variable speed up here for the rotor. We have a variable speed here. There's grease circs on it. When we grease it, we need to run it back and forth, go from high speed to low speed, move it back a couple times, back and forth a couple times to make sure we get that grease spread out all over. Moving around a little bit farther to the back, wheel bolts, I guess I forgot to mention that up in the front there too. And when you're checking final drives, make sure you check your wheel bolt torque. Make sure you check these wheel bolt torque. Make sure you check your air pressure and your tires. Um, coming around here, we have all our drives for our unloading auger. We have our drives for our chopper. Um, you want to look at all these very close. There again, we want to pull belts off. We want to roll these over. We want to make sure everything turns smooth. We don't have any loose bearings. We don't have any bearings that are making any noise. You can see a couple of the filters up there that we're going to check. Um, down here, we get down to our chopper drive. Uh, there again, once we've got this belt off, we can spin these idlers, we can turn this over, we can make sure everything's good there. We want to look at our stationary knives and our rota rotating knives in the chopper. Make sure we have, make sure we don't have chopper knives, hammers that are broke or missing. Um, let's see, what did I miss here? Here's your tension for your chopper belt when you get, when you Put that back on and make sure your gauge is washer or lined up right. Uh, axle bushings, axle, axle bearings, tie rods. Check those, make sure they're good. Um, fins on the back of your chopper, or if you have a power cast tailboard, we're gonna have a couple of hydraulic motors to look at. Make sure we don't have any leaks there. We're gonna have some hydraulic hoses, and then we're gonna have the rotating parts there. For your, for your discharge to make sure we have everything in good shape there. <clears throat> Moving around just a little bit farther, we have a door here, which changes for the chopper, whether we're in corn or whether we're in small grain. This one has been moved back to the small grain position. If we were going into corn next, we're gonna move it up there, but for small grain, there. Um, bearings there. We'll go up top in a little bit and we'll show you that. We'll finish the rest of the way around the bottom. We have our water separator over here that we're gonna look at. As I mentioned on the other side, we got wheel bearing torque, we've got tie rod ends to look at. Let's come around to our batteries. I would, uh, if for the season, to park it for the season, I would pull the cover off there. I would clean the batteries up real good. I would clean all the connections. I would make, put a battery charger on it, make sure it's 100% fully charged before the winter. And then when I do park it, I would disconnect the batteries. There is a disconnect here, so we're gonna disconnect that. Um, tailings elevator chain here, the tension. We wanna take a look at our auger, make sure our auger's not getting wore out, it's getting sharp, something like that. Make sure your tension is good, make sure your bearing is good. We're gonna have to take the belt off. We're gonna roll this around. What I always did is took a can of yellow paint and painted one paddle so that I could roll it the whole distance around. When my yellow paddle came back around, I knew I had looked at every one of them paddles on there and that they were in good shape. Inside, you would have to put the chopper up. You have to get in, we have to look at the chopper. We have to look at the sieve, make sure all the fins are good in there. They're not bent. 
We just got done with corn, so you're probably gonna have to clean some corn cobs out of there. Uh, make sure your chaffer and sieve go all the way closed and open so that we get rid of any problems there. Clean grain elevator, same thing as the tailings. Take the belt off, paint one of the paddles so that you know where you started, where you stopped. Roll that thing all the way around, check every paddle, make sure you don't have any loose bolts, make sure you don't have any broken links. There again, um, tension is up here. The tailings sensors, probably should take them out and clean them up so they got a good clean start next year. Um, if you're into an S-series combine, you've got a couple different different ways that our, our grain loss monitor, or our yield monitor and our moisture sensor are mounted. On the 70 series, that happens to all be up in the grain tank, but on some of the S series, this, that's down here on the clean grain elevator. Um, fan drives, there we have another variable speed here that we need to get greased. We need to speed it up and slow it down a little bit to move that grease around. We have our other drives here, our belts. We've got a lot of belts on this thing. There's a lot of belts, but to do a good inspection, you really need to take all the belts off and roll them around. Top of the tailings, we have that drive. We actually also have a chain up there. Um, we do also have, I didn't take enough, quite enough shields off this one to get in there, but we do have the other shields on this side of the rotor so that we could take them off and get in on this side, take a look at it. That way we also get a little better look at the cover over the top to make sure there's no problems there. Up on the top, we have our cross auger bearings. We can check those. We have the doors up there to be able to clean out the grain.